Welcome to Parenting Kids and Dogs 101, a limited series podcast for parents who live with kids and dogs, or plan to. I'm your host, Michelle Stern, the founder of Pooch Parenting. I'm not just a certified professional dog trainer and former teacher, I'm a mom too. In each episode of this series, I hope you feel like I'm chatting with you, one parent to another, about life with kids and dogs answering common questions my clients ask me, and giving you simple solutions to make your life easier and safer. I hope you'll subscribe and join me for the whole series. And don't forget to grab the accompanying workbook at poochparenting.net slash podcast workbook. Enjoy! In episode 11, I'll be talking about how to help our dogs adjust to routines when they are living with kids or when we are about to have a baby. Dogs living in families with kids are often exposed to somewhat unpredictable routines because we're busy all the time. We're going to work, we're coming home, we're leaving to take our kids to preschool or school or sports practices. And so our dogs need to be a little more flexible than they might have been beforehand. In addition, adding a baby to the family changes everything for a dog, especially when they felt like they were our first baby and our world kind of revolved around them. So what I will do is break this into two sections. We'll talk a little bit about how to help support our dogs in families that have kids already, and then we will talk a little bit about how to prepare our dogs for changes in the routine when a baby is on its way. I'd like to really start by saying that dogs love predictable patterns and predictable routines. It gives them something that they can rely on. And so if they're not really sure what to expect, or if it feels like chaos all the time, dogs who are especially sensitive can have a very difficult time with this. But even our dogs that seem more stable can also struggle. And we can see these struggles emerge in a variety of behaviors that we may not find super desirable. So dogs that are under stress may start to do naughty things like chew our shoes or bark for attention. Oftentimes it can be fairly simple to help our dogs to recalibrate and that might just mean that we need to set up more clear boundaries and more clear routines and patterns so that the dog again can identify what's going to happen when. Let's set up a scenario where the summer is ending and the kids are going back to school, which may have happened recently for a lot of you. And for some dogs, that sudden change of routine can be pretty tricky because they're used to everybody being home much of the time. So what I would recommend is that you prepare as much in advance as possible. That could look like you setting out clothes the night before, packing lunches, maybe batch preparing meals so that breakfasts are easy to grab and go. Now, this can help your dog because it means that you're less frantic in the morning as you're trying to get our kids out the door to school. And the less frantic we are, the less frantic the dog feels because they're going to look at us for clues on how they should be feeling. If you like what you're hearing so far, Don't forget to grab the free workbook that comes with this limited podcast series. All you need to do is head over to my website, poochparenting.net slash podcast workbook. As I sit here with my cup of coffee, I wanted to remind you that there are coffee makers available that you can program them ahead of time and get them all loaded with your coffee grounds and your water in advance and set a timer And it feels like magic in the morning. You wake up to the smell of fresh coffee and it's ready to go for you. So if coffee is as important to you in the morning as it is to me as part of my morning ritual, then doing something as simple as getting your coffee set up in a machine the night before might be an easy way to start your day without you being cranky and taking out those lack of caffeine feelings on your kids or on your dog. If your dog is bugging you in the morning, hassling the kids while they're eating breakfast or begging for food or just generally underfoot, then I really love recommending giving your dog their breakfast 
in the form of a frozen food puzzle, such as a Kong or a topple. And it's a fun activity, depending on the ages of your kids, to have the kids help set these up for your dog and load your freezer full so that all you have to do in the morning is reach in, grab something out of the freezer, and hand it to your dog. And it will be delicious and fun for your dog to work on while you guys are running around the house trying to get ready to leave. If you're adding a baby to your family, congratulations. This is so exciting. And it's wonderful that you're listening to this episode because your dog's routine is going to change dramatically once baby comes home. And I highly recommend preparing your dog in advance for these major changes. So some of the routines that will be modified once a baby arrives is that your dog probably won't be sleeping in your bed anymore and you need to figure out a new place for your dog to sleep. We talked about this in an earlier episode. I recommend setting this up and practicing well in advance so that your dog does not make an association that their change in sleeping routine has anything to do with the baby whatsoever. I also recommend that you start gently modifying when you feed the dog each day and when you go out for exercise. Because as much as we think our dogs are not going to take the back seat when we have a baby, they often do because we cannot lie. We need to really have an honest mindset about this, that if your baby has a diaper disaster, the dog is not going to take priority. The diaper is going to take priority and you're going to dive in and get that taken care of before you go take your dog on a walk or get his dinner ready. So simply modifying the time of day that you feed your dog, breakfast or dinner, just by a few minutes each meal, these can help your dog to be a little bit more flexible because if you have a dog who is demand barking at 5.01 p.m. because their dinner is late, that's going to put a crimp in your style and probably make you a little cranky and frustrated with your dog. And it's not really their fault. They have relied on getting their meals at that exact time for a long time up until now. But things are changing and there's a baby on the scene so we really need to get the dogs understanding that their routine is going to have to be modified some of the time. It's only natural for questions about our kids and dogs to arise from time to time, especially as our babies grow up and our dogs mature. And if I'm being honest, it's not really worth asking for free advice from friends or even online, because you can't rely on the accuracy of the feedback you're getting. If you'd like to learn more about the Pooch Parenting Society, where I offer practical life and science-based tips and strategies, ongoing support, and a safe place to share, head on over to safekidsanddogs.com. From one parent to another, I see you, and I promise that you're not alone. Thanks for listening.